All right, so dating has become so much more complicated than it needs to be, and I'm sick and tired of it. What's gonna happen is over the next 20 minutes or so, you and I are gonna have a little conversation by the fire. Let's put some uh, paper in there, keep it burning. I believe in keeping things simple. So I'm gonna teach you the five most effective strategies to get girls, and then you and I together are gonna pick one of them that works for you, and then you're gonna do it. That's it. Here, let me give you an example, one sec. I want you to think about it like you're ordering at a restaurant. You go in, you sit down. I'm sure you're sitting down right now. If you're standing, comment below. Don't be a weirdo. But uh, you go into a restaurant, they have a menu, and you look at the menu. Oh, okay, a couple different things here. Wow, look at that. Different options on the menu, right? And what you do is you take a look at everything and you decide, okay, this is the one I want. That's the one right there. I like that. You're gonna give the menu back to the waiter which is me, I guess, in this video. I'll take your order, bro. And then once you've chosen what that thing is, you're just gonna do it. The only difference is, instead of ordering a burger or chicken nuggets, is you're gonna be picking a dating strategy in order to get a girl in the next couple of weeks. That's it, buddy. Now, before we get into that, I need to remind you that today is Black Friday. And because of that, I'm doing a special for the next 12 hours, Socializer School is 40% off. Now, Socializer is my top rated program and community. I tell you guys about it all the time. Basically, I teach you how to attract and date two to three girls per week in 60 days or less while leveling up with other ambitious men because it's not just you in the community watching videos. You get to join with 100 plus other men doing the same thing as you. And the program includes 30 hours of video lessons plus infield breakdown videos of me actually going and talking to the girls in real life and showing you the strategies that I use step by step. I'm a visual learner myself, so this is my favorite way to learn. And if you purchase today, you're also going to get Infield Unlocked. And then I'm also going to throw in Denmo Social Course. Plus, you'll be able to join weekly calls with me and the boys to answer your questions directly every single week. So if you are ready to join us, finally, all you need to do is send me an email to denmosocial at outlook.com and I will create a custom 40% discount code for you and send it right back to you. This will only work for the next 12 hours. And I'll be honest, I hate replying to emails. So I'm probably only going to reply to the first 50 people before I throw my laptop out the window. So if you've been on the fence for a while, today is literally the perfect time to join Socializer before it goes back up to full price. Now, first of all, I want to slow down for a second because we got really excited and hyped up there. The idea is you find a strategy that works for you and then you just tweak it a little bit. So what I did was I researched all of the things that have worked for me as well as other friends of mine, guys in my community that I've worked with directly one on one to literally create like a custom game plan for them in order to get better dating results. And I wrote them down on a piece of paper and I'm going to go through them one at a time. So the very first strategy to get girls is to become a Chad. So we're gonna call this the Chad log, okay? Log number one in the fire pit. So when you think of a Chad, you obviously think of somebody that's like a gargantuan fucking unit, like Sam Sulik or some shit. But that's actually not entirely what a Chad is. Like I have a couple buddies that are natural Chads as you call them, right? They play a lot of sports. They're always fun to hang out with. They're always in good physical shape. And they just seemingly have this confidence that is unshakable. Almost like a dog, you know? Have you ever seen a dog in a bad mood? No, dogs are always running around, waving their tails, smiling, going fetch and shit like that. And to be honest, being a Chad is kind of like being a dog. You're just happy all the time. Chads don't have the same anxiety and stress that other people do because they're not as concerned with the opinions of others. They don't care what other people think about them. They don't care about what girls think about them. They don't care what anybody thinks about them. The thing is, when you are going to the gym regularly and consistently, you start to feel a lot better in every other aspect of your life because keeping your body and your mind strong allows you to also be able to do things that you don't want to. Waking up early sucks. Waking up early and then going somewhere like the gym and exercising also sucks. It takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of hard work. And most people just aren't willing to do that. But the thing is, when you are willing to do that, over time it becomes easier and it actually gets cooked into your routine. 
you now look forward to exercising early in the morning. And then you make friends at the gym and then through those friends that you meet, you get incentivized to hang out with them. And where do they hang out? At the gym. So you're always hanging out with people that are doing the same thing as you. And this is why sports are so important for a young man. Because first of all, it keeps you out of trouble. But second, it keeps you out of your own head. You're no longer in your bedroom watching videos all day or playing video games like a dork. You're out there playing sports with other people. And when you're playing sports with other people, you're picking up things that they do well that also would work for you. So in order to be a Chad, what you need to do is exercise regularly, eat a surplus of calories so that you start to put on muscle mass and go to the gym and follow a workout routine. This might take you months, if not years. I'm gonna throw up some transitions that people have made, just amazing fitness transitions where you see guys that used to be thin, not the most muscular, and then they started exercising regularly and they put on a lot of muscle mass. So as much as you want to believe that you're unable to get in better physical shape, you're unable to become stronger, more athletic, and yes, achieve a better physique, it is absolutely possible. It has been done before. Now, the thing that comes along with this is also arguably as important as the physique, which is the mindset you develop. Because you now have proven to yourself that you can wake up and go to the gym and exercise every day and do it consistently enough to see differences in your body. Like I remember when I first started exercising, I was like 135 pounds and I was so intimidated going to the gym because I felt like every guy there was judging me, thinking that I was like just this skinny little bean pole, right? And it turns out that they actually encouraged me to keep going to the gym. They'd come up to me, they'd ask me if I needed help. When I was like, you know, maxing out on a set, they'd come up behind me and lift my elbows up. I'd always get fist bumps. And it was really supportive because everybody at the gym or at sports training facilities is also working on the same thing. And they all come from the same place as you. They all used to be that young scrawny kid that started exercising despite the fact they did not know what they were doing. And now that you're actually doing these things, it increases your confidence because you're showing up every day, you have a routine, you're becoming friends with all these guys, and they just incentivize you and encourage you to keep pushing yourself past your limits. And that's what Chads do. They're always running marathons, climbing mountains, doing new challenges, like even stuff like going fishing or hunting or getting out of the bedroom that they don't want to be confined to every weekend and just going and doing something different. And when you do this, it increases your attractiveness to women for multiple reasons. Number one, obviously your physique is gonna be significantly better. The majority of men don't exercise. If I took the old version of me that barely ever worked out compared to me now, I wouldn't stand a chance against the newer version of me. It really is that simple. There is no excuse for you to be out of shape in 2024. So the sooner that you can accept that and start improving your physique, the sooner every aspect of your life will improve as well. And when it comes to dating, you're more attractive physically. Girls think that you're stronger and can protect them. You can be that character, like the big guy with the broad shoulders that is strong and stoic and masculine, and that's your identity. I know plenty of guys that fit this archetype where they just became like the dude that lifts weights has a beard and just looks strong. And that's their whole thing. Certain women are into that. They like the lumberjack look. They like the guys that are outdoorsy and they go hunting and they can fix things with their hands like cars, even cutting the grass and having your forearms out because your sleeves are rolled up. Girls love shit like this. So that is one strategy to become a Chad. And in addition to this, being a Chad isn't just about lifting weights and doing strong guy shit. It's also about your attitude. You never see these guys mad or angry because first of all, they always get that energy out at the gym by working out. But the second thing is since their body is working so closely to how our bodies worked thousands of years ago, you know, pick up heavy stone. We weren't meant to have smartphones. We weren't meant to have computers and we weren't meant to have so much information going at us every day. So literally just by dumbing yourself down and not doing all the things that everybody else is doing, you're becoming more of a chat. Now, the second strategy I have here is to become wealthy. 
Now, this is going to trigger a lot of you. I'm probably going to lose half the people watching right now because for some reason, all the guys that make excuses about why they're unable to get girls or they're unable to get in good physical shape also have a reason for being poor. I'll repeat that. You probably have an excuse as to why you are poor. I know this sounds like a brutal thing to say, and I would hate me too if I was my 19 year old self watching the video right now going, who is this guy? Why is he telling me that it's my fault I'm poor? I grew up in this country and I'm working part time at 7-Eleven and I'm going to college and blah, 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 blah. Okay, bro, I get it. I agree with you. That's where I was too. I didn't make that much money until I was around 23 years old. Up until then, I was just getting by, man. I was doing part-time jobs. In high school, actually, I was uh, selling gaming items because I used to play like these video games and the currencies and the items you can get in the games. I would literally sell those for PayPal and I would use that money to go and buy stuff at lunch. And then I worked in construction and I didn't actually start my first business till I was about 22, 23 years old. But that's okay. You can still be learning the skills and having the experiences that will lead to you making money in the future. But the point is, if it is a girl that you want, you have to consider the strategy of making more money. Because when you make more money, it frees up your time. It allows you to reinvest back into yourself, aka you can join a course or a community like Socializer. You could literally invest in a mentor, somebody to help you. And that doesn't just mean with dating related stuff, you can afford a personal trainer to get you in better shape, turn you into a Chad. You could afford to only work several days per week, which means you have more days that you can do whatever you want. You could read more books. You could go and approach more girls. You could hang out with your friends more. Why? Because you now have more time. But the only way you free up your time is by making more money and becoming wealthy. So in order to become wealthy, what you essentially need to do is have a high paying skill or be willing to learn from somebody that has the lifestyle and the things that you would like to also have yourself and working under them as either an intern or an employee for a specific period of time so that you can learn everything that they're doing and then implement that same strategy yourself. I recently explained how to do this in a video where I had a friend that worked with a guy that ran a real estate company and he learned everything that he did for several months and then he started doing his own deals, started closing houses and now he's worth several million dollars. And this is a guy that barely made it through high school, didn't go to college and he originally wanted to be a videographer. He started shooting videos for free for a real estate guy, learned the same skills that he had and then he became wealthy. And here's what I mean, bro. Now that you're wealthy, it doesn't mean buying a fancy car, having a nice mansion or going to the club and just spending money on girls, like bringing them to your table to just give them shots. That's not what I mean. When you become wealthy, it allows you to actually become one of the other things I'm laying out on this list because you have time. If you don't have to worry about where your money's coming in, it frees up a lot of stress, which means you're naturally going to be in a much better mood. You're not gonna be as stressed out, man. Like I remember when I first got out of college, I had student loans and I was so stressed. Like I just thought to myself, man, maybe going to college was a waste, right? Like I spent all this money and I don't even really like the program I did. And now I have all these bills that I'm paying interest on. Like this was a really rough time for me and it kind of detracted from everything else I was doing. How could I even focus on like creating an album or making a song or doing something I was really passionate about when I had thousands of dollars that I had to pay off and the job that gave me the money to pay off those bills was a job that I didn't enjoy. I was literally going to a factory to kill chickens every day. It was a really tough spot to be in. And on top of that, I really wanted to get girls too. So I really understand the problem you're going through right now, bro. If not only are you struggling with getting girls, but you're also struggling to make money because you're not successful in two different areas. And it could be so tough, right? Like obviously you've probably heard before, figure out your money first, then worry about dating girls. But I remember wanting to get girls even though I had no money. 
And it's not like I was just gonna wait until I made money before I went and talked to girls. Fuck that, that's stupid. So as much as you're in a position right now where you wanna get girls, but you also wanna make money, you can do both at the same time. But the emphasis I'm putting on getting wealthy is that you suddenly will have so much more control of your time and you'll enjoy what you're doing, which means you are walking around with confidence. And instead of being like in a remote location, like a farmhouse in Alaska or the countryside in buttfuck Idaho or whatever it is, you can relocate to a new environment, a city where there's lots of attractive young women there. There's also guys your age that are also into the same things as you. So you can develop a network, a social circle. But the only way to do that is to find a way to make money and then change your environment. Because I guarantee, man, wherever you are right now doesn't have any good leads. Think about it, man. If you had to walk outside of your house and spend an hour just walking around, how many girls would there actually be? Like how many people would there actually be for you to go and speak to? Probably not many. And that's probably why you live where you do because it's cheaper than living in the city. And you probably come from a middle-class family. Like that's why my parents lived out in the country. And I'm not gonna get you to like hate on your parents right now, but there's a reason that you don't grow up in the middle of the city where all the attractive women are. There's a reason you grow up out in the countryside. It could be because your parents couldn't afford it, or maybe they just got sick of the noise and traffic and whatever it is, but you right now haven't actually earned enough money to put yourself in an environment where you would thrive. So the best strategy for you might be find a way to make more money, start making more money, reinvest that money into yourself. So your body, your mind, your skills, and then relocating to somewhere where there are people around. And that might mean you have to suffer in the meantime because you're saving up all this money because you're using the strategy of becoming wealthy. But after it's over with, you're going to have a business running. You're going to have a really good income stream. And then you can actually take the time to focus on dating. And the other thing you got to remember is when you do become wealthier, you're going to get more interest from girls anyways, because you go to nicer places. They know that if you're in a specific city, then you must have money. They're not stupid. They'll pretend like they don't care about money, but obviously girls do. But it's less about the money that you spend on them. It's less about the money that you show off or people know you have. It's more about the silent wealth that you have. The fact that you're able to take a day off work, walk around in your city and go and approach girls. The fact that you're able to afford to eat at a nice place. The fact you're able to spend two to three days per week working on yourself while everybody else is slaving away at a job that they hate. That is the difference. That is where being wealthy is the best strategy. Now, the next strategy that we're going to go over is becoming famous, achieving status. So this is going to encompass a couple different things. Being really good at music, being a really talented DJ or an artist or a comedian, somebody that gets attention from others by performing a specific skill. Now, I remember when I grew up, I loved classic rock music. I was a big fan of Led Zeppelin, Rolling Stones, Black Sabbath, all these bands from back in the 1960s and 70s. And I would read these magazines where these guys would just have all these crazy stories of like going and performing amazing rock concerts in front of thousands of people. Their songs are playing on the radio. Everybody wants to interview them and the girls are just going wild for them, bro. Like Gene Simmons, I know he slept with like 16,000 women or some shit like that. And when I was 15 years old, I thought that was the coolest thing ever. So obviously that influenced me a lot when I was a young kid. I was like, if I become a successful rock musician, then my dating problem is solved. And I think that a lot of people that became musicians and artists, they thought the same way because when you're good at something, people like you. And when people like you, they want to spend time with you. They will actually listen to the things that you say just because of how good you are at that one thing. It buys you more time. Like if you're a really good piano player, maybe you're a little bit weird, but because you're so good at piano, it doesn't matter. I want you to think about it like this. There's a girl that you're attracted to and she's kind of annoying, a little bit dumb, and she has like a weird accent, but she's hot. So you don't care. It's the same thing with guys when they're good at something. 
even if they're a little bit weird, short, or funny looking. And this is something I didn't really speak about earlier in the video, but I know that a lot of men have confidence issues because they're not the tallest, they're not necessarily the best looking, maybe they're from a country where white women don't swipe as much on them. I get it, bro. I have plenty of clients that I've worked with that had those same issues. But the thing that I always remind them is that there are plenty of short, ugly, weird, bald, any kind of insecurity that you can think of. There are plenty of guys like that that have still been successful dating women. I want you to imagine some of the most famous musicians you've ever listened to. Google their height. It's probably average at best, you know, five foot seven, five foot eight. I mean, if you go on the internet, according to, you know, these fucking black pill YouTube channels, Justin Bieber is an incel because he's five foot eight. Really, bro? You're going to tell me that Justin fucking Bieber is an incel and life's over for him because he's five foot eight? Oh, well, people only like him because he's uh, really talented and skilled. Of course. No shit, bro. Look at all of the top comedians right now, okay? Louis C.K., Bill Burr, Andrew Schultz, T.O. Vaughn, Dave Chappelle. Look at them. Are they the most attractive guys in the world? Absolutely. Why? Because they're funny, they're successful, and people love listening to them, paying attention to them. That's the point I'm making. So you don't even have to be a Chad in order to be a successful guy and attractive to girls if you're funny, if you can play an instrument, if you're really good at a specific thing and it gives you status. You also don't need to be wealthy because there's plenty of artists, there's plenty of comedians that are barely scraping by every month, but they're still able to meet girls. Why? Because it's not about the money to the girls. Specific girls like guys that are good at specific things. Otherwise, we wouldn't have any comedians. We wouldn't have any musicians because there's already so little money in it at first. But if you also take away the attraction you get from girls, now you don't get money and you don't get girls. Nobody would be playing instruments. Nobody would be doing stand-up comedy. Nobody would be acting unless they really liked it, if they really had a passion for it. But I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say that if you're watching this video right now, it's because you want to get girls. So there I am just sharing the truth with you, bro. If you do get good at something that gives you status, it makes you famous, in particular, becoming funny, making people laugh, making people want to come out and see you, then yes, you will become attractive to girls. And you don't have to be wealthy. You don't have to be a Chad. You just have to get really good at one specific thing. My best personal recommendations would be becoming funny, becoming good at music, because again, look at the best DJs in the world. Are they Chads? No, they look like Melvins, <laughs> let's be honest but they still slay because they're really good at making music. Okay, so moving on the list here, the next strategy is to become a socializer. So we got the socializer log in here now. So I want you to imagine when you were a kid, you probably had that one friend that everybody in school wanted to hang out with. They always seemed like they're in like a really good mood and they told jokes all the time and they got invited to parties. And if you had a birthday party, you always wanted to make sure that they came because when they come, now it's a party. And the same thing happens as you get older. There might be that guy you work with that isn't the best at his job, but he's just so fun to be around. You love the guy. It's just very easy for you to feel present when you're around him. And maybe this was your dad, bro. Maybe your dad was like the coolest guy ever. He had a million friends. He'd have a barbecue out in the backyard and everybody would come by and bring beers and stuff like this. Maybe it's your best friend. Maybe it's a guy that you watch in movies or he's a YouTuber or something like this. But when you're a socializer, you're just so good at communicating, holding attention and making the people around you feel good that it's like this quality that people realize they're missing in their own life and they want it from you. It's the same reason we go and we'll watch certain YouTubers all day or we'll watch a stand-up special because we just love listening to this person speak. We love that they know how to say things so that we feel them. And that's a really important skill because I'm sure you've been in school before and you've had a teacher that was just very boring to listen to, right? Like you're sitting there in class, it's math or history or something that you literally don't give a fuck about. But the teacher is so enthusiastic. All of a sudden, 
you're like fucking ancient history. I love this shit. This shit is great. And the only difference is the way that they made you feel when they spoke to you. And there's also more to it than speaking. There's also the body language. There's the tonality. There's the voice itself and how you pronounce things. And your emotions are really high, but then they're very slow and chilled out. But more importantly, you just like talking to people. When you're young, your body is set up to learn things and get reward systems in place to make you do work. So for example, if your parents say, hey, Johnny, go and grab this pen for me and you go and you get it and you bring it back to them, they go, good job. And they give you a cookie or they give you a high five or whatever it is. And like a good little boy, you're like, oh my God, this is amazing, right? And what they're training you to do is to feel good when you do things for them. Just like at school, just like at work, you're always searching for somebody else's approval. And that's why humans do stuff because we want approval from others. Now, the thing is, it's hard to get approval from others when you're young and you aren't really good at anything. So some people, they get good at like running, you know, sports. So that's what I said before, being a Chad. If you're that guy that's always playing sports, lifting weights, great physical shape, and you can physically see it when hanging out with them, then you're going to be like, oh yeah, that's the guy that does this. And that person that becomes the Chad, they feel good. Like I remember when I started lifting weights and I was playing sports more and I looked a certain way and acted a certain way, I liked the attention that I got from people, especially from women. And I liked it way more than the lack of attention I got when I was 130 pounds in high school. So you can also become the guy that is good at playing an instrument or becoming funny like we spoke about. But what I'm getting to is there's some people that the way that their system operates inside their head is they get approval from attention from others by making people feel good. But it's not necessarily from just being in good physical shape or being funny. It's literally just communication skills. You know how to ask questions. You know how to listen. You know how to make people feel nice and warm and loved and valued. A lot of it is like smiling, making strong eye contact, nodding your head a lot, always showing up at the right time, not being late or unreliable. It really does go so much further than just being able to have good conversations. But that is the framework, man. Being social, a socializer, a connector. It's very easy for you to make friends. It's very easy for you to make friends for your friends because if you have some cool friends and then you bring another friend over and you connect the two of them together, now you literally facilitated this relationship between these two people, right? So you all of a sudden added a whole new person to this other person's life that they never would have met if not for you. But why were you able to do that? Because you did something they couldn't. You had the courage to start the conversation. You had the skill set to introduce them to one another. You just were able to pick up on the nuances of when somebody was uncomfortable and knew how to make them more comfortable. When somebody felt agitated, you knew how to make them feel relaxed. And because of this, People want to hang out with you more. You get invited to more places, which means you get more opportunities to be introduced to girls. You get more opportunities to be in an environment where there are girls and then you can go and talk to them and get their phone number. And that's my point. If you're good at talking to everybody, then you're definitely going to be good at talking to girls. You don't have to be a Chad. You don't have to be wealthy and you don't have to be particularly skilled at something like playing piano or being a stand up comedian. You could just be a normal, average guy, but you're a weapon when it comes to communicating with others. You're essentially bringing the need out of humans to be loved and have intimacy with other humans. You're like a bonder. You're somebody that just brings people together. Now, the next strategy to getting girls in 2024 is to become clever. Now, this one is a little bit different than the other ones because it's a lot more thinking. For all of you guys that are like overthinking and you're more analytical, you have like a certain brain type where you look at things a different way. The best way I could describe a clever person is somebody that's lazy. They want a certain outcome. They want something to happen, but they want to do it in the easiest way possible. They don't want to spend a bunch of time doing the wrong thing. They don't want to waste time doing something that's inefficient when they could be doing something much more efficient. So because of this, they naturally try a bunch of different things until finally they find something that works 
And it just so happens that the thing that does work is like thinking outside the box. It's something unusual. It's something most people would never do. So I'll give you an example here. When I first wanted to get more options for dating, I decided to put myself in more social situations. So at the time I was making good money, but I was doing construction and I didn't really have that many friends. So I was like, okay, well, I don't want to have to drive in every single weekend to the city and approach girls for several hours. That seems like it'd be an inefficient way to spend my time. So what I did was I decided to switch jobs. I relocated to a place where I was already in the city and I was around more girls. And then once I did that, I was now not needing to drive an extra 45 minutes twice per day because I was literally right there. So I relocated to a city and I decided that I didn't want to spend a bunch of money getting like a really fancy apartment downtown. So instead what I did was I went on those websites where you can kind of like get rooms for rent and you see places where there's like three or four guys or girls already living in a place and they're looking for another roommate. I moved in so automatically I saved a bunch of money on rent because I was sharing the property with other people. But also as soon as I moved in, I was now friends with these people because they're all around the same age as me. They're all working similar hours. And now we all live together. So instantly I made a new friend group and I was downtown in the city where there's other people that I want to talk to, AKA girls. So I was just clever enough to decide to relocate, save money and have more girls around me. And it seems like so simple when you put it like that, but most people are unable to do things like that because again, they're not clever. They're not thinking outside the box. You can optimize your entire life you can have it set up so that you spend as little time possible doing things that are a waste of time. Another example would be getting food, right? What if you meal prepped every week? Instead of having to go home and cook every single night, you can get a bunch of Tupperware containers or glass, and then you could package all of your food into these containers. You basically spend like one day cooking all of it, and then you put it in the containers, and then you have them labeled for each day of the week. So you're cooking one day per week, and you have your meals done for every single day. So now you're able to eat at lunch in like 10 minutes because you have your little Tupperware container and then you have 50 minutes to leave your office, walk around the city and do some approaches. But normally you wouldn't be able to do that. Why? Because you're so used to going and buying food every day at the restaurant with your other coworker knucklehead buddies that are also not doing anything in their dating lives. So all you have to do is think outside the box, be clever. So if you're a smart guy, you're already working out at the gym, you're already working on your social skills, you're obviously working a job and trying to increase how much money you make, and maybe you do have a skill, like you wanna be a DJ or you wanna be a rapper or whatever it is, you're already working on all those things, but now you just gotta think about optimization. You gotta think, all right, well, if whenever I go on a dating app, I don't get any results and I feel bad and my screen use goes from one hour per day to three hours per day, and my pickups per day goes from 10 per day to 80 per day, and all these notifications are constantly going on my phone screen and it's keeping me awake at night and I can't sleep anymore, then stop doing it. <laughs> stop using the dating apps. I'm surprised that my definition of clever is literally what was common sense just a couple of years ago. but. It really is that simple, man. Another example would be instead of watching YouTube videos four hours every day, just go and walk around your city four hours per day. Even if it is a little bit far to drive, I guarantee you'll get more done by walking around the parks, libraries, coffee shops, and malls in your city and going and talking to girls in real life than you would ever get done by watching videos on YouTube every night. Why does that have to be the intelligent way to do things? Why does that have to be clever? It's actually not. So let's go over these again one more time. In summary, the five best strategies for you to follow are number one, become a Chad. So start hitting the gym, start watching what you put into your body, protein shakes, creatine, just eat a fuck ton of food, follow a couple workout routines, set your life up so that for at least the next month or two, you already have your workouts pre-scheduled, you have a gym membership, you're so much more confident, you feel better, and you start to feel like a Chad, literally because you're living like a caveman, working like a caveman, doing Chad shit, 
you start picking up hobbies like woodworking, you work on some shit in the backyard, you start going hiking, rock climbing, and most importantly, you hang out with other dudes that are already doing this shit. And literally, because you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with, you become a Chad just by hanging out with Chads. And that is your new network of guys. And then the women that are attracted to the typical Chad guy are gonna become attracted to you because you're becoming a Chad doing Chad shit. The next thing to do is to work on your wealth. Ask for more hours at work, or better yet, you find a secondary job that's in a niche that you're more interested in, you have a passion about. Maybe you pick up an extra shift at the bar, or you take online courses or classes to make more money online. You start copywriting, you start video editing. There's a million different things you can do, but essentially you're spending more time making more money. And then once you have more money, you can leverage that money. You can move out of your parents' house and go downtown to the city where there's other guys and girls your age, and then you can move into an apartment with a couple of these other people, and now you have this whole new group of friends, and you're also closer to everything downtown in the city. So instead of having to borrow your parents' car and drive downtown to go and approach girls, you just are already there because you literally live there, and it's walking distance. The next thing that you can do once you have wealth is you can relocate to a different country, and instead of having to work five or six days per week, you can instead work three days per week or four days per week. And if you're like me and you like working seven days per week, you can take half a day off and literally just drive down to the park, go to the city, walk around, talk to some girls, get some phone numbers, and then set up all your dates for the week in one day. But when you're going paycheck to paycheck and you're just stressed out and you don't like your job, you're never gonna be able to do that. Strategy number three is to become really good at something. So become funny, become good at playing guitar, perform in front of others. You can go to improv classes, dance classes. Maybe you make social media videos and you do like video editing and you put some cool music in the background. You post that to all your friends and you start to build a following online. Like when I started my YouTube channel, I basically was just interviewing drunk people in my city and I started putting it on Instagram. And then my friends all kind of like started tagging their friends in it because they thought it was funny. And when you're doing this in a city where everybody kind of knows each other, People start tagging each other. And next thing you know, the whole thing exploded and blew up. And I wasn't even really good at anything before doing this. I just started doing it. And all of a sudden, I got so much more attention from people. And I didn't need to be a Chad. And I didn't need to have money. And all of a sudden, I got all this attention. So for you, if that is the best strategy for you, because naturally, you know, you're funny or you're very interested in something like history, or even if you're good at just making memes, you can do something like this that... Not as many other people care about, but the people that do, they're really interested in it. And girls are attracted to this. They like guys with skills. I know plenty of dudes that are really good at guitar and they're broke, but they have a hot girlfriend because they're just so good at playing guitar. So don't do this specifically to get girls, but think about the hobbies you have that you're really good at that people also like and continue to get better at it and then perform in front of others. And I guarantee this will not only make you feel good because you enjoy doing it, but it will also get you so much more attention from women. The next strategy is to become a socializer. So this is where you just really hone down on your social skills. You become very extroverted. You go and talk to others. You know how to walk into a room and have proper body language. You know how to make strong eye contact. You can use your voice. You can make people laugh with jokes. There's lots of banter, wittiness, callbacks. You remember people's names. You remember the things you spoke about last time you run into them. And you learn all these conversational frameworks where you essentially are like almost doing a sales call when you talk to people. You're going through like the small talk, the medium talk, and then you kind of set up the idea of like going on a date with a girl all by having a basic conversation. It sounds crazy, but like guys fall in love with what we see, girls fall in love with what they hear. And when you're a socializer, you just know how to make people feel good and they want to spend time with you. At our very core, humans seek intimacy. We crave validation from others and we just like spending time with other people. And if you're able to like understand this and then implement the strategies of being a good communicator and a socializer, you're going to get invited to so many different places. So many girls are going to want to hang out with you. Dates are going to seem effortless and you're going to be able to just mesh with people right away. You'll have chemistry with people you've never met before. And within like two minutes of meeting them, you're already jumping into like a deep conversation. This is such an underrated skill, but again, most people 
they don't think simple. They think super complicated, memorizing lines and scripts and shit. No, you just become a better speaker and a more interesting person. And then you put a couple of other pieces into place, like strategies to use frameworks. And then you improvise based on that. And people love listening to you. They just want to spend time with you. And the final strategy is to become clever. And when you're clever, you're essentially optimizing and automating your life. You're using strategies where you think with systems and processes, right? Where am I spending too much time every day? How do I remove that time so that I now have more time to talk to girls? What if I want to be around girls despite not necessarily going up and starting the conversation with them? How can I situate myself in a position where girls come to me? So as far as being clever goes, just think, okay, who is the most social guy in my city? Who's the most funny, interesting guy to be around? What friends of mine do I have that do cool stuff? Just go and hang out with them. Naturally, you start to picking up all the things that they do well. And because of your relationship, you get introduced to all these new people. So instead of becoming a socializer yourself, just hanging out with other socializers. I know that sounds kind of funny, right? If you're so lazy that you don't want to become a socializer, find the socializers that you know and hang out with them. Because if they're a socializer, they're going to have a bunch of friends. They're going to have a bunch of girls already in their life. They're going to be able to get into really good situations socially. And if you just tag along with them, you'll be a part of all that too. So this one's for you lazy fucks out there that just don't want to do these things yourself. I'll give you an example. I have a friend of mine that's like a Chad and he loves hunting and he loves camping and all that shit. And he's got like a truck with all his camping gear. He's got the bags, the cooking utensils. He knows where the trails are. He's got a canoe and all that. So whenever I want to go camping, instead of me figuring it all out on my own, I'm just like, yo, buddy, do you want to go camping? And he's like, hell yeah, because he loves camping. And he loves the fact that I'm willing to just go camping as well, even if I don't have all the gear. So then I go camping with him. And again, I just save myself all the time of doing it myself by just finding somebody that's already doing it anyways and joining them. That is being clever, bro. That's thinking outside the box. So I hope that this video was helpful to you because these five strategies all will get you a specific type of girl. But to be honest, all five of them are applicable to any type of girl, right? The better physical shape you're in, the more attractive you're going to be physically, the more attractive you're going to be mentally, and the more confident you're going to be with everything else you do. The wealthier you are, the more time you have, the less stress you have, the more access you have to certain places, to certain people, and you're just able to do cooler stuff. And more importantly, you have more options because you don't have to live in your hometown. You don't have to live in your house anymore. You can move out with other people. The funnier you are, the more people pay attention to you. The better skilled you are at something, the more attention you get, and the more a reason people have to pay attention to you in the first place. And once they've listened to your song or they've looked at your cool drawings, then you have more time to actually be yourself around them because they would not have given you the time in the first place unless you had the cool art or unless you were funny and they heard about you to begin with. But this also makes you more friends. It makes you money. You could turn it into a business. I want you to think about all the comedians and all the artists and all the YouTubers you watch. As a hobby, they just became good at whatever it is that they do and you started paying attention to them and now you're invested in their journey. You buy products from them, you go to their shows, you wear their merch, whatever it is. And then being a socializer is putting all the pieces together, right? You're in good physical shape now, you got money and you're really good at something. And that thing that you're really good at, potentially that is what makes you money, right? If you love carpentry, if you love woodworking and you make money doing it, you're gonna be a happy fucking dude, bro. I know so many guys in the trades that love working with their hands and they're making bank and they're really happy guys. And that confidence carries over into every other aspect of their life because you're in good physical shape, you're making money, you have a skill you're good at, and now you have the ability to make friends. You get invited to places, you get to continuously meet new people, you can easily start conversations with girls, you're fun to listen to, you're confident, your speaking is on point. You become a glue where everybody wants you around them. Or you become like fire, how about that? People are around you because you keep them warm. And then lastly, yeah, become clever. Start to think about this like systems. Okay, I'm going to the gym now, but how can I make this easier? All right, well, what if I had the equipment at my house? I got money now, I could hire a personal trainer. They probably know more about exercise than I do. And that means I have more time to do the thing that makes me money, which I also enjoy doing, which is my business. So become clever, relocate, maybe even set yourself up in a position where 
you meet girls a lot because you start your own group, you start your own club, your own meetup or something like this. And then you have everybody that shows up each week and they tell a friend. And next thing you know, each week you have all these new people coming and meeting you and they all get introduced to you. Why? Because you're the leader. Think clever. Think outside the box. Put all of the things that you've learned together and now implement them like strategies. And most importantly, man, don't ever go down the rabbit hole of thinking you're not good enough the way you are right now. I know that it's kind of counterintuitive to what I've said, right? Like, you need to get good at something. You need to become more wealthy. You need to put effort into the gym. But the reason I'm saying this is because the hardest thing to do is to start. That's where everybody gets stuck. And right now you might be watching this and you're like, okay, I took notes, Denmo. This was great. I can't afford socializer right now. So I have to watch free videos on YouTube, which I understand. And Despite knowing all of this, you still think there's a better option out there for you. You think there's some kind of shortcut. You think there's some kind of like hack, but there really isn't. It's all about just executing now. Like the strategies have been laid out for you. I've explained why. And, and as far as like once you are wealthy, once you are in good shape, and once you are good at a specific thing, and now you're getting this attention from women, you're able to be in situations where there's girls and they're talking to you, or you have the ability to now go and approach them, that's when Socializer comes in, right? I don't want you to join Socializer when you don't have any money and you're not going to the gym and you don't have any skills, you're not necessarily like a happy guy. And I say this because I want you to get the best results. There's plenty of guys that get to a point where they want to be a socializer, but they're just not ready because they don't have a strategy, right? There's lots of guys in there that are like the jacked guy. They're the Chad or they're the guy that just has a bunch of time and they become spiritual. They become interesting because they read a lot of books and they get to travel to new places because they're wealthy. There's plenty of guys in there that are like me. They're mostly based on like banter, being funny, and that's their thing. So once you've decided which strategy you're going to use, then you need the actual step-by-step -step guide and implementation. And that's where Socializer comes in. So like I said before, hopefully you see this video in time. We're doing the Black Friday special where you get 40% off when you join in the next 12 hours, which includes three hours per week of Q&A where I answer your questions directly. You also get access to the Denmo Social Bonus course and Infield Unlocked as well. And there's actual videos of me approaching girls in real life and breaking it down step by step. So if you are a visual learner, you can just watch what I do and literally copy the exact same things I do. But more importantly, as far as like your actual life goes, picking an identity and a character to play isn't just about like getting girls. It's actually about like, who do you want to be? Do you want to be the warrior? Do you want to be the Chad? Do you want to be the brute? Do you want to be the smart guy? that's clever and meticulous? Do you wanna be the funny guy that's super relatable? Do you wanna be the guy that just knows everybody and is a great listener? Do you wanna be the guy that barely ever speaks? He just writes and you know, is like a philosopher or whatever. You can literally be any character that you want to. It just so happens that for many young guys, especially me when I was younger, if you're incentivized to improve because it means you're gonna get more attention from girls and you'll be able to get a girlfriend or whatever it is. It just makes it so much more worth it to do because obviously I know you wanna improve your mental health. I know you also wanna make money. I know you wanna like retire your parents and travel across the world and just do cool stuff with your friends. But sometimes that's just not enough to really push the needle. Like obviously you wanna do all that stuff, but why haven't you changed? Because you have been focusing on getting girls. And in my opinion, if you continue to struggle with the girl problem and still not sort this out, it's actually kind of selfish because there's so many other more important things you could be doing right now besides just chasing girls. But until you solve the girl problem, it's going to be something you think about every single day because you're a caveman, just like me, you know? Ooh, fire. Fire look good. Fire keep me warm. Ooh, me like fire. It's the same thing with girls, man. Me like girls. Ooh, boobies. Ooh, big butt. It's a fucking distraction, right? But unless you know how to be successful doing this, you're still going to think about it every day and it's going to drive you nuts and it's going to detract from your purpose, which is what you actually have to offer the world. 
And that's going to be a conversation for another day, bro. But I essentially want you to solve your girl problem so that you can solve the world's problems. And I am confident in your ability to do that now that you've watched it to the end of this video. So let me know that you've actually made it this far by saying caveman, okay? Caveman or Ooga Booga, okay? Ooga Booga is nice. I like that. So say caveman or Ooga Booga in the comments below. Make sure to check out Socializer because, you know, I'm going to close the discount for 40% off in the next couple of hours. And it's the best possible time to get in, man. It's so much cheaper than it normally is. And after that, it's going back up to full price. So anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you actually implement the things I taught you in this video. If it was confusing for you, just leave me a comment below. I'll do my best to answer as many of you as possible and tell us what is your strategy now? Like which of these five strategies are you going to do? Which one is the easiest for you? Which one are you most excited about? And which one are you already? And maybe you're considering trying another strategy. Like maybe you're the wealthy guy, but you want to become funny. Maybe you're the Chad, but you want to become talented at something. Maybe you're a socializer, but you're like, fuck, I need to make some money too. So I could be around more socializers. I want to move to LA so I could be around other people that are also creative and into comedy and filmmaking. Do you see what I mean? So yeah, that's the video and uh, you got this, bro. Let us know what happens.